Hiya, and welcome back to Moonlight Castle. The game that teaches us that, ev that Joel, every single time something scary pops up, you just need to be like the rest of us. You just need to start singing, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. You give me reason, you bring me hope, Jesus never let me go. Cole needs to eat, he does. He needs sleep. And maybe to perform an exorcism. Anyways, let's just hop right in. This is Joel, and my name is Clyde. What's yours? Melissa? What a cute name. Can we call you Mel? She gave us a weak nod in response. Did you know that you were wearing his jacket right now? I told him how cold you were feeling, and he didn't hesitate to offer you his clothes to warm you up a little. Thank you. Did it help? I'm glad. Mel, were you alone? Her grip tightened against his arm, squeezing as hard as she could with her tiny hands. Mommy told me to run. So I did. I heard screaming. I don't remember. I came here to find Dad. He can save us. I know because he fights bad guys. He can save Mom too. I felt numb. If her story was accurate, then... Okay. We will try to find your parents. My eyes locked on him since that wasn't a good idea. I couldn't walk near them because my brain would melt. But first, we should find a good place for you to hide while we do the searching. Okay? I guess that worked. I'll check how the situation looks outside. Maybe we can slip through if we're quiet. That is how you die, Joel. That's how you die. I twisted the handle and immediately panicked. From a slow, stealthy approach, I began twisting it as fast as possible, hoping for it to unlock, and... Enough. Enough. We're locked in. Clyde pointed at the other door in the back. That means going deeper inside. Are you crazy? Okay, bye. Ah! Don't raise your voice! You're scaring her. It's getting really hard for me to keep calm. Do you not understand what this means? We're going to lose ourselves in this place, chased by that weird knight or whatever. You messed up knowing that something's after you and you don't even know why or how. We need to stay calm. I'm sure we can find another path and get back to the lounge safely. Oh, hiya. And as, ah, uh, she shyly raised her hand to get our attention. I I've been there before. Her tiny voice suddenly caused my world to freeze. You do? You're looking for that big room with pillars and stairs, right? Hearing her describe the lounge washed me with relief. She did know. And you're saying that we can go there through this other door. Yes, I've been in this room before with Mom. That didn't make sense. I don't understand. I think the layout is actively changing, so it might be wrong to assume it changed just once. Nope, stop, don't say cuz. If you do, that means her route could also be wrong. I don't like it either. You can offer an alternative if you have any. Do I look like I was prepared to deal with something like this? That guy back in the greenhouse was a psycho, not a ghost. I can only pray that everyone's safe as we make our way back to the lounge. Clyde kneeled down to get on her level so that they could stare into each other's eyes. Can I ask you a big favor? Something only someone very brave can do. Melissa nodded, but we could see her hands shaking as she grabbed his clothes. You'll have to think really hard... And remember where you came from, okay? If you do that, we'll be safe. Mom, too? The disheartened look Clyde was trying to, so hard to hide showed itself for a few moments. That was enough for Melissa to pick up on it. I'm so sorry. Wait, what? Wait, what? Hang on. But that wasn't enough for Melissa to pick up on it. I'm so sorry. You were just a child, and going through something like this is unfair and cruel. You should be smiling, happily playing with your toys and making friends. I won't let them take that away from you, so please, 
come with me for now? He hugged her tight, and just for a moment, I believe the rules reversed. Melissa began tearing up, this time silently, differently from before, like an anomaly. I didn't care anymore, I was too mentally exhausted to think about anything. Clyde freed her from his embrace and kindly asked for her hand. Then the two walked out after me. Who doesn't want to hold hands with Clyde? I mean, look at him. He's fucking beautiful. Look at that beautiful man. He's beautiful. Who wouldn't want to hold hands with him? I want to hold hands with him. It felt like an exact copy of the other hallway. Maybe the floor was shaped differently, but I couldn't tell for sure. Does it feel familiar to you? Melissa walked forward and pointed ahead of us. All right. Don't go too far. Stay nearby. The dragon lit up the way with his flashlight, and I stayed right behind him. I was having second thoughts more so than usual. Why was this happening? Why now? It looked nothing like this yesterday. I might not have been fully coherent, but I didn't trust Melissa. I had to choose between my judgment or Clyde's. Dad, is that you? Wait! I didn't see anyone. Where? I'm sure it was him. Look! She led us to the store, which was ajar. Someone must have used it. We gave it a gentle push, and Clyde hit it with his light revealing a spiral staircase that headed downward, deep into the depths of this castle. I closed the door and barricaded it with my own body. If my memory served me right, that was the basement. Hey, what are you doing? We can't. That's too dangerous. Every single cell in my body was vibrating, screaming in unison at just how suicidal going there would be. Mel, are you really sure that was your dad? It's really hard to distinguish anything here. I'm sure he's looking for me. We gotta go after him. Clyde? No. I can't let, the, let you do this. Please, listen to me. That wasn't the plan. But she saw him. I wish I had the same kindness you have, but I'm honestly really struggling to care when we're also in danger. He might be at the bottom of the staircase. If we hurry, nobody has to go through anything. Don't be mad. But I'll have to refuse. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Call me selfish if you have to. No, I would never. I'm just trying to help as many people as possible, but I can see why you'd act like this. Why are you doing this? I, I want to see my dad. I miss my mom. Let me go to them. I held my tongue. Her words hurt. A child speaking to me as she held back her tears was cutting deep into my soul. I wish Blake was here. He always knew what to do. How to make a difficult choice. To sacrifice something for a greater cause. Of course. If Blake was here in my place asking you to give up, you'd do without hesitation. I was hoping for another opinion to break the tie. Not that I valued yours less. Then give me your opinion. Tell me why I should let you through this door. I want to help both of you. But doing so seems impossible now. So let's compromise and do what I said. If he isn't near the entrance, we'll run away, okay? I can't let you do that. I'm going to see my family whether you like it or not. She reached for my leg, wanting to shove me out of her way, but for once I was too heavy. Hey, hey, no! Don't bite me! The brat caught me by surprise as I didn't expect her to take initiative like that, and to avoid her teeth, I lost my balance. Melissa was about to climb through and enter the basement only for Clyde to grab her and hold her in place. No, stop! Dad! I'm here! She was being too loud, and the last thing we needed right now was attention. I'm sorry. I agree. It's too risky, but I couldn't stop myself. Clyde, completely oblivious to her tantrum, addressed me instead. I'm not strong enough to tell her the truth. No matter what you do, don't step into the basement. They're looking for you. Blake's voice echoed through the walls, as if he had become the castle itself. Blake? Where are you? I didn't understand it either, but Melissa was just as shocked, giving me the opportunity to close the door and push her away from it. What you saw wasn't real. Your father is somewhere else, so please be a little more patient. It was tough. I was demanding that a ten I was demanding that a ten year old act like an adult. What was she supposed to do? Clyde waited for that Blake like voice to speak again, but the hallway fell quiet. I'm going alone. I hated playing the bad guy, even if it meant being mean to her meant keeping her alive. Clyde had to let her go. She was nothing more than a stranger. Unlock the door. Huh? I myself, and shockingly, it locked itself. 
That wasn't me. It really was a trap then. My mind questioned the purpose behind the events that just transpired and my skepticism kept growing. Joel, we can't stay still any longer. He quickly grabbed us both as we continued venturing deeper into this void without a destination. Then I heard it. Footsteps, slow, unsynchronized, and metallic, followed by the sound of metal dragging across the floor. Quickly exhorted me to run faster so that Clyde could help Melissa. Not now, please, I just need one door. My body, now fueled on, a, on adrenaline, checked everything I could get my hands on, but the doors refused to open. Melissa! I heard him yelling, then he yelped, followed by a thud. The walls nearby collapsed and a wave of dust washed over me. I covered my face and squinted my eyes, hoping to locate Clyde. He was on the floor trying to help the kid, but she seemed stuck, with something holding her down. Debris? I knew that Clyde wouldn't leave her there, so I reluctantly turned around to assist. We can easily lift it together. Just follow my lead. I tried, but I was cursed with noodle arms. It felt much heavier than it looked. Just unrealistically so. I don't want to die! Help me! I beg you! She was panicking now, making too much noise, letting that monster know exactly where to go. Clyde! This isn't working! We have to leave her! And save me! Clyde looked in the direction of the knight, refusing to move. His eyes were fixated on the rock trapping her. He might be strong enough. Are you losing your mind for real? That knight will just cut through the rock and kill her! Watch out! I found myself slammed against the wall. My insides felt like someone had grinded them to a pulp as I puked blood onto the floor. My mind couldn't process what just happened. Did he hit me with the sword? No. Otherwise, I would have died on the spot. I forced my body to look forward, seeking Clyde. I tried to check on the situation, only to see a nightmare unfolding in front of me. The dragon, turning his back on the knight, had reached for the kid and hugged her tight, using his own body to shield Melissa from a deadly blow that he took in her place. It didn't sever his body, but the amount of blood that poured afterward was telling of how deeply that wound really was. I tried screaming. I wanted to stand so badly. I wanted to do something, but my body disobeyed me. Clyde! She did it in my place. A high-pitched scream so intense it brought me to tears. The dragon looked like he had something to say to me, but all the blood clogging his throat wasn't letting him. The knight seemed ready to finish the job and move on to the next target. Stop! What are you doing? A female voice suddenly interrupted him. The knight froze mid-swing and another figure appeared behind him, making little to no noise. Can't you hold yourself? I can't have you killing him like this. It's a waste of precious material. Then I quickly came to understand why I couldn't hear any sound. She didn't have legs or feet, but one, lo but one long serpent-like tail, as she slithered forward to give Clyde a quick look and assess the situation. It reminded me of a reptile, but I struggled to fully describe what I was seeing. Her head was just as terrifying with those snakes hissing and rattling as they nested on top of her. You better hope he stays alive until the ritual is ready. Take him away. Her tongue clicked and the knight obeyed, dragging Clyde away by the tail. I thought I couldn't have been more traumatized, but when I saw the look in her eyes, that emptiness, something inside me broke. He was at his limit, yet his eyes moved to meet mine, a desperate attempt to fight just a little longer. I wanted to think, as he disappeared into the hallway, that he regretted leaving us in this situation, and how his sacrifice didn't matter at all, and he just wasted his life. You did good. At least someone does what they're told. Melissa cowered in fear, unable to say anything back to this monstrosity. Try not to die, okay, sweetheart? We need you alive. Her sweet tone felt like poison on my already broken up body. It'd be boring. I like drowning more. Give... Him back! She cackled, clearly enjoying the suffering I was going through. He'll be yours again very soon. Don't fret. I kept coughing more blood while she left us there, wallowing in my own misery. I forced myself to move and have my body obey me, but it was no use. Her, my eyes settled on Melissa, still completely paralyzed, soaking in a pool made of Clyde's blood. I caught her speaking to herself, apologizing over and over again. I wanted to speak. I wanted to be fucking useful for once. But soon my rage and pain quelled as I collapsed on the floor, giving up to my to my work, own wounds and fatigue. Another fight I was meant to lose. I opened my eyes again and sensed movement. It was slow, unsteady, like someone was dragging me away. I focused and realized that Melissa was taking me somewhere, or trying to was a correct expression. Hey! I immediately triggered a coughing fit when I attempted to make a sentence. 
She flinched and dropped me when I cried in pain. Shocked to have reacted that way from such a small fall. This is bad. Something must be broken for sure. She looked at me with a disheartening look full of guilt and regret. It's my fault. You didn't kill him. I hated how easily I accepted that he was dead. There was no way someone could survive that. He, he made that guy set me free. He was too scared to move, so he shielded me. A hopeless idiot until the very end. Leave me here and run away. Don't you want to see him? And then what? Even if I did want to see him, could I do it? Could I face the consequences of that choice? Blake must be so mad right now. I did absolutely nothing tonight. I watched him die. Deep down, I was grateful to still be alive. That's why I hated myself. If you promise to run back to that room with pillars, I will. Some friends of ours are waiting for us to return. All I ask is that you let them know what happened, okay? And then you'll join me? Yeah, of course. I just need to speak with Clyde alone. Okay. I considered it my way to atone for being me. Wanted to save her at least since he gave up everything for a stranger. That was your wish, right? I placed myself against the wall and crawled upward to regain some footing. My whole body was burning. Something was clearly wrong and being able to feel my organs crushed by gravity was a bad sign. I could feel my heart beating in my ears. Watching all the blood I had to follow only got my heart rate to rise. That was his blood I was following. He kept going straight until there was a sharp turn to the right, continuing underneath the door frame. I stared at it longer than I was supposed to. There was no denying what was awaiting me on the other side, and I didn't want to see it. But I had to. I owed it to him to see it through. There you are. Sorry for taking so long. As you can see, I'm doing awful. Everything hurts, but you look much worse than me. It all happened so fast. I was still talking to you. And the very next moment, I saw how lifeless your eyes became. Just like now. Was this worth it? Did your life matter so little to you? I wish I could get that answer right now. But I guess you'll have to wait for me. This hurts. This fucking hurts. Trauma and FBNs, name a more iconic duo. Right? Madurg! Ah! My cheeks felt wet. Now that I had finished talking, I was giving myself the opportunity to grieve. Not yet, almost. Somehow this pain felt worse than my wounds. I slowly caressed his face and it was cold as ice. I wrapped myself around his neck, hoping deep down for a miracle to happen. There was nothing there. I would only watch his body move according to my whims like a puppet, which only cemented the horrid truth that he had died. Done saying goodbye. She peered out of nowhere and not a sound was made, which suggested she had been in the room all along, watching him. Just get it over with. She licked her lips, already tasting what was about to come. I can't wait to see how much you can handle until you break. I felt her slithering toward me, wrapping her coils around my body, and just like a snake, I felt her crushing my body as she twisted, squeezing me harder and harder. I felt a pain I never thought a person was capable of experiencing. Something that you only needed to taste once to have it permanently etched in your mind. Something so traumatic it was impossible to explain it in words. I felt my organs being pushed against one another, only for my bones to barely hold it together until everything cracked, grinded to a mush. I screamed, a primal voice that was quickly snuffed out of my consciousness faded. My life was extinguished at last. It all faded to darkness, and for the first time, I was glad it did. In the void, I felt something reaching out, looking for me. At first, it was an unintelligible whisper coming from everywhere. Then it became chatter, multiple people talking at once. They never overpowered each other, making it impossible for me to discern specific words. I started wondering if we even spoke the same language anymore. What was I doing again? It felt numb. Everything was a mess in my head, like something had been forced out of my mind. I opened my eyes again and went back into the real world. Liam was about to leave with Russell in tow. What are you going to do? I'm fine with going alone as well. I'm still interested in seeing this place up close, so show me. Fine. You four wait for us. This was strangely familiar, like a deja vu, but I was confident this had never happened before. Wait! 
My response was too soft. I yawned as if I'd just woken up from a long dream. And yet the whole room was now staring at me, wearing the same confused expression. I didn't accidentally shout, did I? Was that you? The lynx turned to face me, holding an unsteady finger in my direction. Everyone seemed to have noticed it. Strange. We all have a degree of sensitivity to the supernatural, but we tend to brush it off as a figment of our imagination. That, that felt like something hit the back of my head. It's such a strong presence. Is it normal that I stopped feeling it? You can quickly get used to it. No, you really have to focus to notice anything. Why do you feel like I'm looking at a completely different person? I was really self-conscious right now and held my hands up in front of me defiantly, hoping to gain protection. What are you talking about? Just stop looking at me that way or I will use the hat. Did you fully awaken? He expected an answer, but that sentence didn't make sense to me, although it did make me feel weird hearing it. No, that wouldn't explain the abrupt change in your soul. This feels like you've always had it. He scouted me once again, this time focusing more on my body, and somehow he managed to make me feel violated. I didn't like him, of all people, staring at me so hard. Then his eyes widened as he approached me and grabbed my wrist. How did you get that? Get what? I followed his eyes to see for myself what he was looking at and found a strange circle around my wrist. At first you could confuse it for a tattoo, but I never got one. I'd at least remember getting it. It reminded me of ink, and no matter how much I rubbed it, it didn't go away. I have no idea. Did someone pour ink on my wrist or something? That's not ink! That's a cursed mark! I shrugged, since what he said didn't make sense to me. You get those when you make a trade, so to speak. You gave up something to get another in return. Yes, Liam. I know the textbook definition of trading. I have no recollection of doing such a thing. With who and why? That's crazy. You're a medium now and your seal has been broken. That's all I know. My seal? It's something about suppressing your talent. No clue how you got it removed, though. Don't look at me like that. I don't know much else. The moment it broke, you drastically changed and any medium could feel that. Sorry, um... I still don't understand. You think I've got all the answers for you or something? Go figure it out for yourself. Now that you've awakened, there's no reason to hold you back. Take my equipment. Your body will show you. Russell approached us, knowing that our conversation reached its end. I refuse to believe any of this until you show me a real ghost. Russell, shut the fuck up! You'll see plenty tonight, don't worry. See you guys in one hour. Have fun. There is nothing fun about this. I was strangely overwhelmed even though nothing happened, just Liam saying more bullshit to me. You should sit down for a second. We're all tired. He tried hiding their concern by focusing on a different task, mainly looking after Patrice. Something else was making me upset, though, something I couldn't quite grasp my head around, and now I was clinging to Liam's rudeness as a way to let those feelings trapped in me burst forth. You're crying. My eyes widened in response, and as I touched my face to confirm what he said was true, my confusion and shock increased. Am I? <laughs> Fuck. A volcano of feelings erupted just now with my acknowledgement, and but I didn't understand the reasoning behind it. Don't worry, I'll keep you safe. Ryan reached out for his usual bear hug. At that point, I merged with what my body wanted and I began sobbing along. My hands grabbed his fur as tight as possible, unable to control myself. I needed this. Blake will be back soon, so please hold on a little longer. Why? Why was I making such a scene out of the blue? This wasn't like me at all. It got so intense. Patrice approached to reassure me, almost as if he wanted to be stronger for my sake. I didn't have the courage to explain any of it, but it was indeed a cathartic moment for me. I was letting something go, something unknown I didn't need anymore, but my body was clawing to it. Are you hurt somewhere? Would you like me to check you as well? No, I'm okay now. <laughs> I don't know why, cats, but seeing your message, seeing the messages you send in chat always cheers me up. No. I'm okay now. I felt ashamed of showing myself to them in this miserable condition. You don't need to be shy about it. Have you seen the shit show we're in? Crying is the most normal reaction you could have had. Or maybe that's your power, right? Mr. Medium! He was still holding me, so I took the opportunity to pinch him where it's softer and he yelped back a quick apology. Shut up. You're not funny either. I looked at Clyde and I was met with an understanding smile. You're thinking about going, but seeing what I just did is giving you second thoughts. I jumped off Ryan's lap and glanced over our bag. I'm simply prioritizing your well-being. I trust that Blake will return promptly after figuring out the current layout. He's smart and you should listen to him. A frown followed that comment. This was just convenient to you, wasn't it? Is there something you have to do? 
Patrice understood my feelings, but I didn't know how to convey what I was going through. I settled for a reluctant nod. What is it? The book? It's fine. I didn't answer. I knew that pushing this conversation about it wouldn't work. Let me take your place. You and Patrice stay can stay here. Isn't that better? That wouldn't work. Patrice took a deep breath, trying to stop his body from shaking. I have to go as well. I thought you had changed your mind. It's hard to explain. I also have something to do here. Something I can't put into words. I don't want you to I don't want to wait one whole hour only for us to go out regardless. They all looked at me in surprise, and after listening to myself, I was also taken aback. What do you mean? <laughs> That's awful. That I, I don't know how to respond to that, Kath. I do not know how to respond to that. I needed to retrace my steps. Giving them more worries wasn't going to help them. I probably just skipped a few steps, like we should search for them if Blake is missing. That'd be hard to believe. True. Blake is the most capable of us all. He might not be as strong as me, but he's really good at adapting to the environment he finds. Big words. Impressive. I'm going to forget about your feelings and fight you. Maybe a good punch in the guts would help. You weren't supposed to take that seriously. Come to the hallway and help me get ready. Are we really doing this? I thought you'd like the idea. It does sound kind of fun. Oh, hiya. Great. Give me your best shot. It won't work the way you think it will, but now I really want to try it. Shouldn't we stop them? I shrugged. Ryan always enjoyed a good match, and they were just doing a friendly fight. I think this is just their way to de-stress. You're worrying too much. Then we should watch and keep an eye out for injuries. Sports are fun, but sometimes you can hurt yourself. I can't say I'm not interested in spectating. They're using the hallway to not bother us, but we should tell them to do it in, to do it here for a larger space. I'll do that right away. I sighed, now sitting alone in this dining hall. My thoughts were running freely, with nothing holding them back. Clyde looked like he wanted to explore with me, but refused my offer. Was I missing something? I did feel like I was forgetting a lot of stuff, but with so much happening, how could I? I looked at my wrist. Maybe there was a clue laying there in plain sight? There must be a connection somewhere. This shit doesn't just spawn out of nowhere as if we were in a game. I think I'll tell you to take a day off tomorrow to play games with Ryan. Joel! He yelled my name and I jumped in my seat, staring ahead toward the door. I could hear his footsteps quickly pacing back to me with a clear sense of urgency and distress depicted on his face. What? I'm here! I, I can't find them. They're gone. That sentence took me by surprise and left me a little bit skeptical, too. There's no way. Have you checked the lounge? I did. I rushed back to you, worried that you might have... Okay, relax. Let's think about this rationally. I could feel a strange energy around the dragon, but it didn't seem to bother him. He was growing anxious by the second, and a tornado formed with Clyde in the middle of it, acting as its core. And they vanished, just like Liam said. I am worried that the others might disappear as well. I had to make him see reason. We don't know exactly what happened. You weren't there to see it. Patrice mentioned a few times that he wanted to go out to explore. I know, but the timing is weird. That's too fast. Too sudden. <laughs> it's too fast, too sudden. He was arguing, but I could feel the storm slowing down, and with that, I noticed the source as well. Maybe something caught their attention? Wouldn't be unusual for Ryan to get distracted and wander off. I think we shouldn't stay here. I know, I said we should wait, but I can't stand the idea of being a bystander anymore. Not even for Blake. Not even for Blake. I couldn't stop staring at his bag. The bag had to be the source. The whole place changed and was now fully swallowed by darkness. This air was stale and heavy, or maybe it was just me. My breathing became labored, requiring actual effort to push my lungs to work. It was a strange feeling, somehow I'd experienced this before. Can you hear that? My body was still adjusting, but my ears didn't pick up anything but silence. His bag was glowing again, and I was confident that he couldn't see it. Describe it to me. I asked and waited for him to answer, but he was silent. Instead, what I heard felt strangely familiar, and that wasn't the first time either. My head was acting up as well, readying itself for a migraine. I don't think I can, ignore, I can ignore this anymore. Clyde was too focused on his own investigation to stop me from taking that book out of his bag. Hold on, what are you doing? I'm trying to learn a thing or two about this thing. It was so warm, just like a living being. You could almost sense a heartbeat from within. 
Is this really the same book that attacked us? I didn't feel threatened by it at all. This strange energy it generated was completely neutral. Whenever it opened, bad things happened. Doesn't that prove it's dangerous? Any tool can be dangerous when the owner lacks the required talent. Who said that? I looked up toward the ceiling, but I couldn't see anyone, and Clyde was still waiting on me to answer his concern. Did you not hear that? No? Shit, did that prison sleeve? I thought my headaches were related, but I barely felt anything. <sighs> it was comparable to a gentle knock now rather than a full-blown episode. I really wanted to see it. Something inside me was itching for it to show up again. The urge for an unknown entity I've never met. The book suddenly lit up, shining brighter than ever, forcing me to shield my eyes from its light. But what's going on? It must have been strong enough that Clyde could see it as well. Don't waste your energy just to call me back. Oh, hi! I know, the winged wolf. A winged, a winged dragon looked down on us from the ceiling. His clothes seemed outdated, like a getup that didn't match our time period. I didn't... He pointed at the book I was holding, and that made me realize I'd thought about it. I wanted him to materialize, and the book reacted to my wish. Your time is running out, and you won't get a third attempt. Bitch. Bitch. This is our twelfth. Because we have the magical omniscient power of the save system. A third? I offered you the opportunity to leave this place, but you've returned once again. That meant yesterday we had managed to escape because of him. I cannot protect you anymore. What I do, please give me a lead. I don't have the authority to, to interfere with your judgment any longer. Prove your resolve to the castle and we shall meet again. He lifted himself up and phased through the ceiling. I sighed, feeling like I earned nothing from this conversation. Is it over? I need you to tell me what you just saw. I was surprised by his initiative. A sigh remembered. That I he seemed lost in what was happening, so maybe he pieced it together after my reactions. I went ahead and told him what had happened so far. Was that a ghost then? I think so. I was hesitant about calling him that because it didn't match the descriptions we were given. Like, our expectations were different. He felt real, his body was casting a shadow, though it would easily prove that he was alive. Yet, he phased through the ceiling. That lack of collision with the surroundings wasn't normal either. He had to be unique. Our conversation proved that plenty. He said he was protecting us, but I have no idea how and why. What I'm mostly concerned about is that he said you'd met him before. Yes, but I don't remember that. I do. I'd waited for me to come up with something else, but I wasn't forgetting anything. You wouldn't forget someone like him. He added that we're running out of time. What do you think that means? He could be referring the out could be referencing the hour Liam gave us to explore. Does he want us to either do something during this time frame or suffer the consequences? Don't phrase it that way. Failing usually brings forth a punishment of sorts. I scratched my head in frustration. The answer could have been right in front of me and I was barely missing it. This place might follow its own rules, but they feel grounded to reality in a way. Everything happens for a reason regardless of whether it makes any sense. We both stared at that cursed book in my hands. That person called it a tool. He sounded like we were the reason it behaved the way it did. I can't find a good explanation for those sentences we saw. They were also a manifestation of what we wanted. An answer, at least. We will not discuss what I was thinking when Margaret was around. That leaves the council room. You think. Who activated the book? Who turned on the book? Who double-clicked the book? Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. I just remembered something from that. When you were in elementary... Okay. When you were in elementary school... When you were in elementary school... And they were teaching you how to... How to computer... Did the teacher... 
did the teacher also call it pizza pizza? Did the teacher refer? Did the teacher refer to double clicking? To double clicking an icon as pizza pizza? When I was in elementary school, and this is some bullshit, when I was in elementary school, we had a computer class. It was a required class. We weren't allowed to just not be there. It was required. We were required to learn how to computer. Um, the teacher, we would go in there, we would go into the computer lab. We would go into the computer lab. And the teacher, she would say, okay, okay, uh, you, okay, go and double click on fucking Microsoft Word or some shit. And it would be pizza, pizza. I also got yelled at because I didn't type fast enough. We were forced to learn how to type properly. We were forced to learn how to type properly. And whenever I would type properly, which is like your index fingers are on the F and J and vice versa, you know, standard typing position and you do that. Yeah. I can't type like that. So like what I do is I'll, you, I only use my middle fingers to type. Some people use their index fingers. I use my middle fingers. You have no idea what I'm talking about? I don't even know what I'm talking about. So, Liam turned on the book. Liam could have done it. That can't be right. He's supposed to be the experienced medium here. I think it was done on purpose, Clyde. Are you saying his reactions back then were fabricated? That he was acting the whole time? No, no, no. Here's the thing. We had to type, like, five sentences, I think. The proper typing method... You know, thumbs on the space bar, that shit. We had one minute. And I couldn't. Like, it was physically impossible for me to type that fast. Then I switched to using my, my middle fingers to type. I had 30 seconds to spare. She yelled at me. For not typing in the specific finger positions, in the proper finger positions. She yelled at me for that. I don't know if she still works there. It's been... I think around... Shit, like... 12 years? No, it wouldn't have been 12 years. Yeah, yeah, it would have been 12 years. Yeah, around 12 years. It's been about 12 years, over a decade. Are you saying his reactions back then were fabricated? That he was acting the whole time? I don't think so. I think he miscalculated. You wanted proof, so he gave it to you. Something flashy, something hard to rationalize. His bad manners toward Blake first, and now completely disregarding your safety. He really makes it hard for you to stay impartial. I won't let him get, get away with it scot-free. Nobody goes unpunished. That's why I can't have him take the fall for someone else. It's hard being you. It is. See, I also do that sometimes, but I usually just use my middle finger. There was another thing keeping me busy, a single thought, one so insane I believed it impossible. I would normally brush it off since there was no way for a concept like that to ever be real. This familiar yet foreign feeling could be explained by it, this hole inside of me, the way only my body seemed to remember. Oh yeah, but before I forget, the only time I actually use proper finger positions is on the piano. That's the only time. But I haven't played the piano in, like, a year. So, yeah. This familiar yet foreign feeling could be explained by it. The hole inside of me. The way only my body seemed to remember. Did all this happen before? Joel. Are you ready to go? Oh, hiya. Uh, it, it's really good. Uh, Levon's stream. Yeah, it's... It's good. 
That I, I don't know how else to describe it. it. It's good. Are you ready to go? Yes, this way. Clyde moved along the wall, seemingly looking for anything that could point him toward Blake. I had to rely on his flashlight for movement. The light from my camera was growing weaker and weaker instead, like it was running on batteries. Ah. Somehow the darkness was growing thicker and winning. That feeling of familiarity never left me, and by the time Clyde found those broken windows, I began remembering things. Things that didn't make sense. Things that never happened. Random pictures were flashing in my head. Along with all the emotions associated with them. Have you seen this? The rock I just tossed and didn't make a noise at all. Oh, you already tried? The castle is most likely floating to keep us trapped here. Clyde took a step away from me, pressing his hands against his torso, terrified of the implications of such information being true. I see. He looked troubled, but never once attempted to rationalize it or outright deny what I was saying. It was unnatural for me to know so much and accept it that fast, but watching Clyde do the exact same thing was even weirder. You have to tell me what's going on with you. His face perked up, considering that idea, but he reluctantly looked the other way. I can't. It's dangerous. I'm not sure I'm al what I'm allowed to say without backlash from them. From whom? Are you being threatened? He couldn't tell me. I could feel it by the way he was looking at me. This is why I was hesitant about leaving the safe room. These voices must have been influencing Clyde's choices. Since when? By the time we entered the castle, I was already hearing them. I told you to let Liam know, to make him be useful for once. I was afraid I might jeopardize everyone's safety. What about yours? Aren't you included in that? It's not that I considered myself less important. I just gave priority to the rest of the group. Why is this happening? I'm not a medium. You are. So why am I the only one who can hear this? This was a problem. I couldn't let Clyde deal with it alone, but I was so powerless. What could I do? This was supposed to be my terrain. I was technically built for it, but I genuinely don't know anything. I wanted to know. I wanted to learn. I wanted to understand what I was capable of. The book responded to my pleas, shining just as bright as it did earlier when I begged for that entity to come back. Hold my hand. Hurry. What are you going to do? I want to help. Let me help you. Clyde was still debating doing what I requested, only for me to take control and grab his hand myself. In that moment, everything faded away. Ha ha ha! Here's Johnny. Fucking The Shining reference. In that moment, everything faded away, but I was conscious somehow. I started seeing places I've never been to, people I've never talked to, voices I've never heard before, and so much more. It felt so natural to me, like I've always had these shattered shards of knowledge in my brain. But one thing in particular really stuck with me. The emotions they brought along, everything I was feeling after learning them, it synchronized because I would feel the same way. Yes, because these weren't mine. These belonged to Clyde. It felt like diving inside of him, entering his life, watching it fast-forwarding all the experiences he had gone through. In an instant, I learned everything there was to know, and the very next moment, I had forgotten it all. All that was left were those fleeting emotions that sent shivers down my spine. I understood. I was being shown exactly what I had asked for. I was just a man and my mind was limited. Learning this much in such a short time would have destroyed me. I needed to focus on what I wanted, controlling the flow rather than following the current. I want to hear them. Make me hear what you hear. And don't be afraid of opening yourself to me. I yelled, lost my footing, and fell to the floor. I didn't know what was happening anymore. Hmm? Oh, hi. You doing okay? Clyde knelt down after me to check for injuries. Did I do it? I have no idea what you're referring to. You grabbed my hand, but nothing happened. Don't. Stay away. Danger. Leave. Come. Fall. You. Want. You. My eyes widened in response. Many voices spoke at once, taking turns, sometimes in unison, sometimes chaotically. Everyone will die because of you. Clyde sighed as he stared at the ground beside me. That's not true. How is this your fault? He immediately met my eyes and I reassured him with a nod. Castle belongs to him. I belong to you. No, stop. That's not true. I've never heard of this place before. Die for you. No, lies. I was wrong. I assumed the book was a culprit, but it turned out to be the opposite. The book was trying to shield him. 
Are you an enemy? Hang on, I'll be right back. I'm I'm back. So yeah. Uh words you wanna say? Oh shit, you got any words you wanna say? No. Okay. Go play. Are you an enemy? Yes. Wish for death. No. Wish for life. This reminded me of a hive mind. One that lacked order. Giving out chaotic responses that followed the strongest cry. People die for you. Make it stop. quick if you are considering self-harm or suicide please please reach out to someone make stop make it stop Clyde was on the verge of tears now that we figured out how the book worked he was showing me how the situation truly affected him you did nothing wrong don't listen to it I'm here focus on me I wrapped myself into his arms and wished for silence, wished for this to stop, shutting down these voices. All your fault, all your fault, all your fault, all fault. The voices slowly quieted down lower and lower until they became unintelligible whispers. Do you still... They're gone. Thank you, Joel. I remembered feeling a presence from the lounge, something that was slowly making its way toward us, but now it completely vanished as if it never existed. Do you want to continue... I might have said that too soon. We were still laying on the floor, panting, trying to compose ourselves from what could only be described as a sensory overload. We have to. No, we don't. This isn't our responsibility. We can go back. We can wait until Liam does something about it. More images ran through my vision, almost wanting to prove me wrong the moment I spat out those words. Like my mind was just being petty now. You were the one who said they won't return. That's why I found the courage to take matters into my own hands. I didn't want to be those voices, but then you said the same thing. There was never a choice to begin with. Things might have changed, memories in my head might be different, but the outcome was the same. We need to keep going. There's something, something only I can do here. I can't run away. That was something I truly resonated with. I thought Clyde couldn't understand what it meant to run away from your problems because all he's ever done was face them, walking forward. But I could tell now that that wasn't the case. Is running away such a bad thing if it can keep you alive? Those words weren't meant for Clyde alone. I was, asking, I was asking myself the same question, looking for an answer I thought I had, but it lacked real conviction. Then just don't die. I looked at him unamused. It was a boring answer, something I would have expected to hear from Ryan. Were you expecting a life-changing response from me? We might cross paths with many people during our lifespan, but the road you take is yours alone. That means you have to decide what's best for you, regardless of what everyone thinks. And tonight, I wish to find myself. Will you help me? Doesn't that mean I'll be walking next to you? He chuckled, his whiskers wiggle, wiggled along. I do like traveling with company. His hand extended to me and I grabbed it to get up from the floor. Now you're just changing the rules to fit your rhetoric. Is that wrong? Blake always told me about how we created rules to guide us, but nowadays we use them to imprison ourselves. That wolf always knew what to say, hitting me where it hurt. We can make our own. I never stopped being a prisoner in my own mind. Not even now that I acknowledged it. That is one way to interpret my musings. Before we could come to an official agreement, an earth-shattering scream invaded our ears, sending us on high alert. This voice, it sounded like a little girl, deeper into the hallway. 
That wasn't what I wanted to say, but Clyde hurried me along. My head instantly sensed danger. I felt no pain whatsoever, but I could tell this was serious. Wait. I grabbed him before he could walk through that familiar hole. If someone's in danger, we should... There's two entities in there. Listen carefully. Don't rush inside without a proper plan. Clyde calmed down after staring in my eyes. I was fully controlling my emotions this time. We should assess the situation by eavesdropping to learn more about them. Then we move accordingly. Clyde nodded and we peeked inside, hoping for the best. Stop trying to kill everything you see! Her voice alone sent shivers down my spine as unconscious fear took over me when I laid eyes on her. I wanted her to scream on purpose. Don't let that rile you up. The night next to her let out a similar primordial scream that stopped my heart for a couple of seconds. I hate having to deal with you. The night didn't seem as talkative as that snake monst monstrosity, but through those long breaths I managed to make out one word in particular. Envy. If you stop acting up, maybe he'll get here soon. She'll be our bait again. The wording gave me goosebumps. They seem to have a vivid recollection of what happened, a much scarier thought when considering that I was holding on to blurry moments full of pain. I watched Clyde sneak further inside through the bushes. He was heading for the other passage, hoping to start a distraction. But that was him who made the night leave. I didn't see it, but I came to the conclusion he did it. I'm going to check on the other guy in the meantime. Other guy? Who else was here? Her words were too vague. She slithered to the pond and submerged herself in it. Diving so deep, she completely disappeared. But the pond was too small for a creature like her. I confirmed that yesterday. Everything played out exactly the way I thought it would. The night was tricked into leaving the room, Clyde saved the child, and we left the same way we came from. But now I was aware of this being a setup. They wanted us to rescue her. Why? I could hear footsteps coming from the greenhouse, and running away back to the lounge was possible. Things were going to change. I could protect them both this time. Is it this door? I turned around and saw Clyde opening that same door we were forced in last time. What? It felt so painful witnessing something that wasn't meant to happen unfold in front of me regardless. Here, hurry, we have to hide. No, it's open, the hallway is clear. We can't just lure the knight into the lounge, that'd be a problem. I wasn't fully convinced, but I didn't have an argument against that. I reluctantly did as he asked, because he wouldn't follow me and splitting up was worse. God damn it, Clyde. This didn't feel right, we had no reason to be here, this could have been avoided. Clyde gently looked after the kid who had collapsed under so much stress. It was a traumatic experience for everyone, but mostly for a child. I didn't understand how we could get attached to her so fast. She's too cold. The dragon lamented as he checked her pulse. Oh, Keiko, right here. Right here. A uh, typo, I think. Typo! The dragon lamented as he checked her pulse. I remembered that expression. He did that before. What's wrong with her? Internal bleeding? I didn't see anything on the outside except a couple of bruises left by the ropes. I don't know. I casually placed my hand on top of her arm and was taken aback by what I felt. She should be dead, but we could see her diaphragm moving. She was breathing. This is beyond my understanding. I can't estimate how much time she has left. We have to escort her out. And Blake? The others? They're all adults, aren't they? I'm sure they'll be fine. I'm going to keep an eye on the hallway. Call me if you need anything. I didn't like the idea of leaving everyone behind, but this wasn't the time to bring it up yet. The door we came from didn't lock itself, so getting rid of the voices haunting Clyde must have prevented that from happening. Don't cry. I'm here. He reassured her as much as he could, but I was more focused on locating the knight. Entering this room was a terrible choice. He just needed to walk past and block the hallway by standing there. That's Joel. He's a friend, and he's keeping guard so that you get a chance to rest. I see. Make sure to thank him later when you get the chance. I should say sorry. Clyde, we're going to die. Please stop beatboxing. Ah! Say sorry. No, it's okay. Everything's going to be all right. How are you doing? Think you can walk on your own? Before she could answer, Clyde turned around and offered her a piggyback ride. Can I? Of course. She slowly made her way to the top, keeping a firm grip on his shoulders. Then he moved toward me. I can do that too if you need a break. I'll hold. We're near the safe room, aren't we? We could run for it, technically. And the knight? No idea. I was confident that we were being chased by him. His metallic footsteps were unmistakable. Did he give up on the chase? Melissa seemed way more relaxed than I believed. She buried her face into Clyde's clothes, hiding a smile underneath. 
I forgot how nice this feels. Does your dad not play with you like this? He's always busy with work. I see. We can do this for as long as you like. Her chest is so warm. But I'd also look much happier. Maybe the happiest I've ever seen her. You'd be a great dad. Me? I didn't give it much thought. I liked the way he blushed, how flustered it made him, and now he was and how he now how he was being self conscious about it. I'm not at that age yet, and I haven't found a partner either. Clyde, Clyde, baby, baby. You're asexual. Or is he or is he Demi? Would he be Demi? Is he asexual or demisexual? Pretty sure he's at least homo romantic. Or pan romantic. Oh, hi, cat. Really? You you had to go up there. Fingers. Ah, I'm not at that age, age yet, and I haven't found a partner either. Just someone like you wouldn't struggle on that front. Stop, this is inappropriate. He didn't sound very convincing now that his face completely changed color. I'm glad you can make that kind of face in a situation like this. What kind? Do I look weird to you right now? You always look fine to me. We should go. We're wasting time. I opened the door and led the way back toward the lounge. No, not that way. I need to look for my dad. And mom, she was in that forest. We were hoping to get to safety as fast as possible, but she suddenly turned against us. Clyde had to slow down and she'd slip, fall, and hurt herself. It didn't matter how much he tried persuading her. His sweet words weren't getting through anymore. Mel, please. We agreed that you'd wait somewhere safe, remember? I can't go there. Why not? Do you trust me? We're not gonna stop it for the ad. Wanna break from the ads? Do your no ads dance. Do your no ads dance. Yeah! I always love seeing your no ads dance. And what is that fucking cat doing? What are you doing, cat? What are you doing, you cat? What are you doing? I'm gonna go get him down. What are you doing? You shouldn't be up there. You you should not be up there. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm gonna go get him. I'm gonna go get him. I'm, I'm gonna put him. A little, we can't be a little shit. You can't be a little shit now, and that makes you mad. You're not allowed up there. You are not allowed up there. Live electricity. Do you trust me? I do. Then don't let go. I won't abandon you. I'm sorry. You're young. You have so much time ahead of you. Don't apologize when you haven't done anything. Classic cat behavior. Classic orange cat behavior. They're they're all little shits. They're little shits. He's he's just gonna stay on my lap for the rest of the stream, maybe. If he'll if he'll be good, if you're gonna be a good little if you're gonna be a good little noodle. You're gonna be a good little noodle. 
you're young. You have so much time ahead of you. Don't apologize when you haven't done anything. You remind me of someone who does that a lot. The audacity of that lizard to look my way after saying that. I don't. You're imagining it. The closer we got to the lounge, the harder it got for Clyde to convince Melissa. You are you are not going on the you are not going on the desk. You are not going on the desk. She really didn't want to go there and worried me. Did she see something? Whatever the dragon could ask for whenever the dragon would ask for a reason, she wouldn't give one and only cry. I was overwhelmed with relief. The safe room was just a few more steps away from us. Let me down. Are you sure? We've arrived just a little more and Melissa didn't wait for Clyde to react and jumped off. Oh my, are you okay? I knew we had to be patient, but I wanted to grab her multiple times. I'd be awful with kids. I can't go with you. You've been saying that for a while, but I don't understand why. My family is looking for me. Oh boy, that wasn't a conversation I'd be thrilled to have right now. Mel, listen. There's something you should know. I know what you want to say. My head began pulsing. This pain was way too familiar to me. I haven't felt it this strong in a while. Clyde, hurry! Realize how far Clyde and Melissa were from the safe room compared to me and how weird that was. He had been subtly walking away from it, dragging Clyde along with him. Dragging Clyde along without him realizing. Just come with me. I don't want you to get hurt anymore. I told you I can't! Forget about me. Joel's waiting for you. Shit, if only I'd figured this out a bit sooner. Clyde, get away from her! You can still survive. Don't do it again. I began running toward Clyde, but I knew I wouldn't reach him in time. The distance between us was greater than the knife who had suddenly materialized from thin air. She's a ghost! Run away! Clyde embraced her again, just like he did that time, as I prepared himself to swing. I don't care! She's still a child! Before I could do anything, I felt my energies being taken away from me and flowing toward Clyde. Seconds later, the sword was thrown across the room, just as it was about to strike him down. You knew? Her eyes widened in shock, and I honestly agreed with that sentiment. I suspected it, but I wasn't sure. And you still protected me? Does it matter? I told you I'd keep you safe, didn't I? Melissa smiled and threw Clyde onto me. She was stronger than we expected. Wait! Joel, take him away before he decides to be reckless again. I wanted to, but he refused to cooperate with me. My body was growing tired. I wasn't really aware of how much energy I could use up, and just now, I did share some with Melissa somehow. It doesn't have to end this way. What about finding your family? Clyde! Clyde! Baby! Clyde! Please! Shut the hell up! Shut the hell up, Clyde. Just... Just... Shut the hell up. You're so stupid. You're adorable. You're an adorable derg, baby. But you're a fucking dumbass. She's dead. D-E-A-D. -E dead. She is a ghost. G-H-O-S-T. What does that spell? Ghost! This is exactly why I'm getting mental health. I could see the look in her eyes when he reminded her of the things she had said. I'm sorry, I really am, but we don't have time to talk about this anymore. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, I'm, I'm going to let the cat out. Hey, you want out? You want out, buddy? I really am, but we don't have time to talk about this anymore. That's not fair. What? How? You don't deserve this. Life can be cruel, don't you agree? I eyed the knight in the background, who went to get a sword to resume his fight. Clyde, the knight is coming back. This snapped him back to reality, and we pushed ourselves into the hallway. I deemed it safe because she refused to enter, but we stood on guard anyway. What do we have here? The snake creature spoke from the staircase, looking down on us with a grin on her face care to explain the situation. Melissa didn't say anything and avoided meeting her gaze while the knight wanted to move past and reach us. He was strangely walking on the spot, almost as if something was holding him back in place. I see. You've decided to betray me. That hurts, you know. She glared in our direction as the serpent made her way down toward the child. I can't do this anymore. It's okay, sweetheart. This was your last job. No! I heard Clyde back from crossing and I held Clyde back from crossing back into the lounge, using my whole body to weigh him down. 
The snake coiled herself around Melissa and stabbed her with the sharp end of her tail. Melissa turned around, wanting to take one more look at Clyde. He was on the floor, now in tears, probably cursing my name for interfering. Clyde, thanks for making me feel alive again. She slowly faded away, losing her body, losing all color until nothing was left, as if she never existed in the first place. Her clothes were the only thing that remained. The night immediately approached us, and that injected panic in me as I urged Clyde to get over it and run. Stop. You can't walk in there. Leave. We can't do anything here for now. And so he vanished, just like a ghost would. Enough with those tears. She hasn't died yet. A malicious grin formed across her face as she tasted the suffering she had caused in Clyde. And you're staring at her right now. No ham, no turkey. Mm -mm 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 -mm. No, sorry. Your name is not Melissa. Your name is not Melissa. What is your name? It's fucking Medusa. Little Miss Sunshine and Rainbows. Hang on, let me get comfortable. You're staring at her right now. His eyes widened in shock. That new piece of information halted his sobbing. An evil laughter filled the lounge as she also disappeared. I struggled to give words to what just happened. My feelings ranged from sadness to anger to relief. And I couldn't imagine what Clyde could have been going through. I'm sorry for keeping me out of trouble. Didn't I say to not waste your apologies? She could have been she couldn't have been saved. I knew that. It doesn't change the fact that it felt like I had to do something. I'm sure that it wasn't in vain. I know, but it's not enough to end the stinging pain in my chest. Sometimes I wonder how life would be if I wasn't who I am. What do you mean? Forget what I said. I don't have the right to feel that way. I like how I like who you are. I'm sure Mel would agree. I think so. Let's go back to the safe room. Okay. What the fuck? What is this? I looked behind us just to make sure we did take the correct path, but I was confident this was supposed to be the safe room. I'm not mentally prepared for more trouble. The room presented in front of us was kind of small and cramped, but also old, abandoned, and the passage of time left a clear mark. Help me. A gentle voice reached my ears, followed by a cold breath hitting my neck. I turned around and saw Clyde with a similar expression to mine, and concluded that it was, again, a ghost. It came from deeper inside, the smaller room behind Clyde. I squeezed through and looked around. Something was there in front of me, barely perceptible, faded in a different way. I didn't know how to convey this feeling. But if I had to describe how the soul dies, this would be it. Just a faint blue silhouette of what may have looked like a living being in the past. This is what a ghost was supposed to look like, according to Liam. That's a female voice. Could it be? The room was empty. This place didn't give any clues toward her identity, reasons, or motives. The only way to confirm our theory was to ask the ghost herself. Melissa's friends. Clyde looked away. Hearing her name again only brought back the pain he was trying to suppress. Liam. Does that name tell you anything? She didn't speak, but her sadness increased upon hearing that name. I could feel the spiritual being being over... The spiritual body being overwhelmed with regrets. I miss him. Her spectral hand moved in my direction and I extended mine. We couldn't feel each other, but we pretended we did. Blurry tired empty vision help me i'd have loved to help but what was i supposed to do talking and locating ghosts seemed all i could do how your body let me in i could see clyde from the other side of the room through the ghost's distorted body giving me clear signs to not do that i kind of agreed i didn't know the dangers of carrying a ghost inside my body would she take over would i lose my mind but i couldn't help but trust her regardless of those risks there was a familiar energy in her, a sweet kindness I haven't felt in anybody else before. It was hard to see, buried after experiencing death in the castle's corruption, but it was still there. The ghost vanished before I could give a reply, and now that she was gone, something else was trying to get my attention. I found it! He pointed at the desk in front of me, where something shiny was trying to catch my eye. I grabbed the ring and felt a gentle aura around it. There was no doubt about it, she was inside and trying to keep herself from fading into nothingness. That sounded so cruel. Was that the ending for all people who had died to lose themselves and disappear? She acted so confused, losing the ability to recognize herself. 
holding tight to those fragments of what used to be your identity. I didn't want her to experience death again. She could have been my guide and ticket to survive the night. I slid the ring onto my index finger. Was that wise? It's not exactly your ring. I felt tired, but aside from that, nothing happened. You're right, I'll remove it. It wasn't coming off. We were supposed to return that to Liam. Uh, I'll figure something out. Then you break the news to him. I don't think I can handle someone like him right now. For now, let's just get out of here. Back to the lounge. Are we going to check the safe room in the back, or... The ring felt really warm. I think we were sent there on purpose. Let's not talk about her anymore. At least not for tonight. Okay, I'll stop. My hand, my hand began float. My hand began floating like it had a life of its own, which freaked me out. Why are you doing that? It's creeping me out. I instinctively pulled my hand back into my chest. I held still for a second and felt that warmth from the ring again. It wasn't trying to seize control over my hand, but rather it was guiding me somewhere. So I decided to let it go and see where it would lead me. Then I noticed that just my index finger was moving and everything else had just followed along. I took small steps as I tried guessing where it wanted me to go. You've decided to let us show you the way. Kind of? I'm curious. The hand stopped in front of the boulder blocking the entrance. You want me to touch it or something? The temperature shifted slightly. No, wait, that could mean anything. Without a proper definition, it was up to interpretation. Make it hotter for yes and colder for no. The ring warmed up. Cool, you actually understand me. I should have whispered more. He was looking at me again. I'm not insane, I swear. There, my hand is on the boulder, so was there anything I should... What the fuck? The boulder began fading away, just like all the ghosts I've seen so far. Were the rocks fucking ghosts too? I... Didn't expect that. I knew what he was trying to tell me, but having to eat his own words so soon must have been tough for his pride. What's the plan now? Are we running? I don't like the idea of leaving everyone here without a word of warning. Then let's sit and wait for them here instead. And if something else shows up? We'll have to decide between running into the safe hallway or leaving entirely. Our options are terrible. But there isn't another way around it. Hello, who's there? A trembling voice came from the direction of the safe room, accompanied by faint steps. I immediately recognized that voice and called back. Patrice, it's us! He paced his way to us quickly and, with great relief, charged into me. Brian was right behind him, and the moment he heard my voice, he sped up and got there before Patrice. Oh my lord, am I happy to see you guys again. Joel! Did you miss me? I was so worried we left for a few minutes, and when we came back, you guys were gone! That's... strange. He left exactly for the same reason. You guys suddenly disappeared and never returned. Whatever, I don't care, you guys are okay, that's all that matters. I've had enough of crazy, we should get out of here. Have you found the others? No. Wait, is the boulder gone? Can we leave? Please tell me we can leave. I'd love to, but... No buts, the others haven't shown up. What makes you think they will soon? We have to get to safety, now. Just a little bit more, please. They found it first and waited. We should at least do the same, right? It's not that. I'm scared of being attacked again. If that happens, then we'll run, okay? I won't hold you back. Fine, I'll try. It didn't take long for us to hear footsteps coming our way, but the noises we were hearing didn't match at all. Is that them? That's too many. It's not a good sign. Get ready to run. Russell was the first to appear in my vision. He was holding Liam, who had bloody clothes around his arm. They were aiming for the safe room only to hesitate when our eyes met. Is the door open? Dylan, the gate is open! The lynx shouted. Russell resumed running and, without saying a word, went past us out of the building. Run to the cart and don't look back! The ground underneath our feet was shaking, but there wasn't an earthquake. This was the weight of many people combined that were running in our direction. We left the castle. I didn't want to meet them. I'll slow them down. Get running. Get the car ready to move. Hurry. I heard Dylan's voice, but I was too afraid to look back. We just ran through the forest into the campsite and back to our beginning. My heart was pumping as much oxygen as it could, and I was way too tired for another round of adrenaline. In the midst of that chaos, Blake caught up with us. Glad to see you all safe and sound. He shouted as he sprinted forward to get access to the car first. Ryan luckily only needed a button press to unlock the car. We hastily jumped in, turned it around, and waited facing the road. Where the fuck is Dylan? Should we open the window or- No, lock the damn car! But that way he won't- We need to protect ourselves first, sorry. Blake took initiative and locked us in. That selfish choice proved to be the wisest one tonight. We saw an army of strange people dressed in black capes running towards us, with one defining feature each, doctor's white plague masks. Among the chaos, I noticed something and pointed at it. Dylan was in that mess, surrounded by a countless amount of them. Shit, he's struggling to get here. Are we gonna abandon him? Ryan, listen to me. Turn the car around and hit them all. What the 
Don't ask me to murder people so casually. If you don't do that right now, they'll kill him, Ryan. Shit, shit, shit. He cursed multiple times as the engine roared and the car drove over these so-called people. What they said was true, at least. They, they didn't damage the vehicle either. No sound or collision. They just popped out of existence. Jump! When the car was close enough to Dylan, the crocodile slashed a few more with the knives he was holding and jumped on top. They tried doing the same, but Dylan smacked them away with his tail before they could land. Move! I'm trying for fuck's sake! Everyone was struggling to breathe, me included. I couldn't imagine the pressure Ryan must have been feeling at that moment. Patrice was also hyperventilating again, and Clyde tried his best to do some damage control. Let me see your wound. Russell tried mending Liam's wounded arm only for Liam to make space between him and Russell. I'm fine, don't touch me! Ryan managed to drive us all away from those people, or at least far enough that we could allow Dylan inside. We all took one big exhale as we watched them becoming smaller and smaller until they were completely out of view. It seemed they all went through some bad stuff, probably even worse than ours. We have a lot to talk about, Liam. I figured. I do it right now, but you're wounded. You're so considerate, I thought you wanted me dead. You see me hurt tickling your conscience now. What about you? Do you not feel a slight shred of remorse for involving normal people into this? It wasn't supposed to be like this. I need time to think about it. This discussion is for tomorrow. Clyde looked like he had something to say but held it in. We were both mentally and physically exhausted. There was no way we could be capable of holding a proper argument here. Patrice calmed down and the car went quiet again, with nothing but our thoughts to fill in the blanks. I wanted to sleep to shut down my brain, but my body refused to obey me. It believed to be in danger still. That fear of dying permeated not just me, but everyone else too. The ring would have to wait. I'll confess my findings tomorrow when a new day comes. Hopefully I wouldn't stay awake the whole night staring at my ceiling, afraid of the night breaking into my house and killing me the moment I tried closing my eyes. And that is Clyde Route. We are doing Liam Night 2 and Day 3 tomorrow. Liam Night 2. So, yeah. We are almost done. Just one more stream. And stay safe. Have a good night. And I will see you all tomorrow.